Yo, what up YouTube? This is Shammy with Tanks and Taints. Hey, real quick today, I just wanted to go over my first paludarium. Um, it's kind of a little bit of an experiment. Usually, um, I build terrariums and things like that, so this is my first time kind of going into more of the aquatic setting. Um, so what I got right now is a 20 gallon long um, rimmed fish tank um, and converted it into a paludarium. Um, one of the things that I'm using is a Eheim Aquaball 130 filter um, attached to a spray bar uh, that goes across the planter. I'm using an AI Prime uh, freshwater light. I know it's maybe a little bit overkill, but I love this thing. Fully customizable, uh, really stoked on it. Also, as you can see on the side, I'm using a simple passive CO2 system. I didn't want to get caught up into all the, the expensive CO2s um, and I think I've gotten a pretty good result out of this just using the passive. I just wanted something simple, nothing too crazy. Um, and then also the last piece that I'm using um, is EpiWeb material. Um, I have huge sheets of this and basically what I'm doing is creating a background um, EpiWeb and then on the bottom I've cut a sheet of EpiWeb and what EpiWeb is, um, a lot of people use it in the terrarium world, is basically mimics tree fern panels um, and what this is, it's pH neutral, it sinks, um, it doesn't float and plants are able to attach off this material. Um, what I wanted to do is kind of do an experimentation and kind of throw it into the aquatic world and see how it works. Um, so with this being said, I made a planter. Um, out of the EpiWeb material. So I have a huge sheet that covers the back wall and basically I slit this sheet down the middle with a knife and created a pocket in a sense um, to shove these plants in and what I did was I filled this pocket full of um, hydro balls or um, hydroponic little clay ball substrates um, that filled it up and it allows the plant to give it um, a base. So with that being said, um, I got a lot of moss growing in here. So as you can see, this is all Phoenix moss. Um, I got about nine Tetras in here, some cherry shrimps and a couple mono shrimps um, that I need to take out. Uh, I got some water lilies here um, that continue to keep growing. Um, from there, I got some um, plants from the garden. Uh, this is basically, um, all a bunch of terrestrial house plants that you can get at Home Depot or your nursery, some ferns, um, money plant, you name it. Um, it's kind of all shoved in there. Also, um, I do propagate moss. Um, so with that being said, um, I kind of covered the lip of the EpiWeb um, and it's kind of continued growing into the water. Um, this is actually Java moss um, in, in the background. So basically what this is, is there's a whole sheet of this and I cut little slits into the back wall and shove this moss and then as you can see it starts to grow out. It's the same concept down here. Um, I didn't want a tank full of substrate. Um, kind of gets messy. I didn't want to deal with all of it so I actually used this bottom sheet as um, a placeholder for a substrate and what I did once again is cut slits in rows and then take a pinch of moss and then I pinch it out and then from there, it kind of just blew up um, into the moss. Um, got some water sprite in here, a um, couple other plants that I got in here. So um, I like this setup. Um, I've never really gone into the fish tank world or the aquatic setting. Um, anytime that I do my testing in my water, it's usually at zeros with my nitrates and my ammonias, um, just because it's so heavily planted. Um, and it's kind of just a self-sustaining plant. Um, you can't really see it now, but kind of see it back there in the water. These plants have shot roots through this EpiWeb material, and now they're kind of in the water, which you can kind of see here, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, kind of gives it that overgrown jungle effect, um, and those things do well because they're just eating up the nitrates and the ammonias um, at this point. So as you can see, I'll show you guys a little pocket that I created. Here's your Eheim Aqua Ball. As you can see, more roots here, here. Um, I don't even know if this filter even does anything anymore, just with the roots um, shooting through into the water, soaking up the nitrates and the ammonias. Um, at this point in time, 
it's just there to move the water to the spray bar that I hooked up. It goes across the back of the tank and then into the pocket. So as you can see, there's my pocket and my plant shoved in there. And then the spray bar um, just kind of waters the plants. As you can see, it's kind of get in there. Sorry for the glare. Yep, as you can see, got some moss back there growing. Um, got a few things going on back there. Um, so a lot of plant growth uh, with that being said. Um, so yeah, this is the tank. Like I said, it's a 20 gallon long. I'm using EpiWeb as the background and as the bottom. I'm using an Eheim Aquaball 130. Um, I'm using a passive CO2 setup and then the AI Prime obviously um, that's giving the light support um, and uh, making everything nice and grown. So everything's grown out. I don't believe I'm gonna trim this. Um, I kind of like the overgrown jungle look. Um, kind of makes your eye wander when you're sitting here looking at it. Kind of have to investigate um, and you kind of have to stare a little bit longer just to kind of see what's going on in there, which I kind of like. Um, I don't think I'll be trimming anything. If I do trim anything, um, it is gonna be going into my moss farm setup um, just for additional plants. I got some java fern in there, um, additional mosses um, that I'm growing just for future projects, um, anything like that. So if I do make any trimmings and clippings, um, it will be just going into there, uh, but nothing too crazy. I'm gonna keep everything the way it is. Um, so yeah, that is the 20 gallon long paludarium. Kind of see it from the top. It's kind of a hot jungle mess right now. Um, so if you guys want any additional information on this build, I know sometimes when we do these videos, some of you guys are like, how the hell did he do that? Or how did he build that? Can we get some more clarity on a certain piece of your tank? Um, I'm more than welcome to answer those comments, questions, or concerns down below. So if you guys want to see more future builds, just click the subscribe button. Um, hit me up, leave a comment. I'll try to um, get back to you guys ASAP. I do have a 75 gallon paludarium build um, that I'm gonna start doing. I have another nano paludarium build that I wanna start doing. Um, this was kind of just the first phase of teaching myself um, really um, the aquatic side of it and understanding how to balance your water, uh, keeping your nitrates and your ammonias down and um, learning pH and all that. So this was kind of a, a test subject to me. Um, this was just to kind of learn um, some of the things that I haven't really experienced before, which is the aquatic side. So at this point in time, um, I got to dial down pretty good with this terrarium. I kind of know um, the steps I need to take uh, for future projects to kind of balance the water level um, and keep your, your nitrates and ammonias and nitrate um, at lows. So appreciate it, guys. Um, leave a comment, and uh, I'll get back to you guys. Peace.